In today's story, Testing the Ice, we hear Sharon Robertson speak about her father, Jackie. This is the true story about Jackie Robinson, Testing the Ice, written by Sharon Robinson, illustrated by Kadir Nelson, published by Scholastic Press, New York. The year was 1955. Dad was in his ninth season with the Brooklyn Dodgers, and for the third time in four years, they faced the New York Yankees in the World Series. When my father stole home in the first game, Yogi Berra, the Yankee catcher, screamed, He's out! The Empire, however, shouted, He's safe! It took seven games, but the Brooklyn Dodgers finally beat the New York Yankees. Oh, how we celebrated! Earlier that same year, my family moved from Queens in New York City to Cascade Road in Stamford, Connecticut. Our new house sat in the middle of six acres on a narrow, twisted road named for the waterfall at the end of it. The best part, according to my father, was the woods on three sides of the house, which screened us from passing cars and curious strangers. But to my brothers, Jackie Jr. and David and me, the best parts were our new friends, Candy, William, and Christy, and the lake that ran from our yard to our neighbor's yard a whole quarter mile away. We spent our first summer playing by the lake. We had picnics, we swam, we rowed our boats. But no matter how much we begged, my dad would never come into the water. How our friends loved playing inside our house. Our playroom had a pool table, a soda fountain, and a huge gray boulder that was built into the wall. And while we took it all for granted, our friends made a big fuss over Dad's trophy room. They stared adoringly at his plaques, his silver bat, the signed baseballs, and Dad's bronzed college football cleats. And they asked him questions in ways we never thought to ask. Then one rainy Saturday morning, over a game of Monopoly, they got Dad talking about his historic entry into Major League Baseball. Baseball, like most of America, was segregated, Dad began. Major League Baseball was for whites only. Black and brown-skinned players had to play in the Negro Leagues. Some of the greatest baseball players are not white. They were denied entry into the major leagues just because of the color of their skin. Finding food worth eating or a restaurant to serve us was a daily problem. In many places we played, there were no hotels that allowed blacks. That was just the way things were in 1945, and no one expected them to change. I was playing for the Monarchs when Branch Rickey approached me. He told me he could get me into the Brooklyn Dodgers. I know you're a good ball player, Mr. Ricky barked, but do you have the guts for this? The next few minutes were tough, as Ricky warned that I would be called all kinds of names, threatened and attacked physically. The next question he asked startled me even more. Could I take all of this and still control my temper? I thought of the doors opening to other black players after me, and how the color barrier of baseball would be shattered. There was only one answer. I'll do it, I said. Playing that first spring was tough, especially the game between the Dodgers and the Phillies. Some fans cheered me, others shouted insults that were so bad I had to struggle to keep my temper from exploding. After seven scoreless innings, we got the Phillies out in the eighth, and it was our turn to bat. I let off. The insults were still coming. I lined into center field for a single, then took my lead. I cut out for second. The Phillies pitcher threw wide, and the ball bounced past the shortstop. I rounded third and made it home. That was a sweet victory. We all sat there wide-eyed, listening to his every word. My dad was amazing. Guess you showed Mr. Ricky that you had guts. 
Kenny said. Sure did, Jackie Jr. replied proudly. That's why he won the first Rookie of the Year award. Yeah, and the most valuable player award too, Willie added. Bet you'll even get into the Hall of Fame someday. Dad wasn't much into bragging, but I caught his lips curl into a smile. Dad retired after the 1956 season in a surprise move that shocked his fans. But he didn't stop there. After baseball, Dad took a job as vice president of a popular coffee company, wrote books, walked in protest marches alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and raised money for the civil rights movement. And best of all, he was home. With Dad home, we did more as a family. The lake provided us with the most fun through every season of the year. In the spring, we watched frog eggs hatch into tadpoles. We fished, rode the boat to sandbanks, and captured turtles snapping in the sun. But Dad stayed dry on the shoreline. In the summer, we challenged ourselves to swim across the width of the lake, but Dad cheered from the safety of the sandy shore. No matter how hard we pressed, Dad always found a reason not to get into the water. In the winter, the lake froze. My brothers and I huddled in the living room with our parents as we listened to the eerie sounds it made. It howled and moaned throughout the night. As the ice thickened, the sounds deepened. We waited nearly a week before popping the question. We found Dad sitting by the fireplace, reading the newspaper. A hot fire crackled and hissed. We want to go ice skating, we all shouted together. He looked up into six eager faces. What did your mother say? She said we could, we told him, just as long as you come with us. Dad looked anxious. It's below freezing, he reminded us. Then the ice should be good and frozen, Jackie Jr. said. Yeah, strong enough to hold even you, David chimed in. Please, Mr. Robinson, Candy and Willie pleaded together. Christy and I want to practice making figure aches. I added. Dad smiled proudly. So it's figure eights today, is it, Char? I beamed. Yes, Daddy. We've been practicing in our socks. Well, in that case, he said, hiding sheepishly behind his newspaper, I guess we should go. The mad scramble began. We all ran from room to room, looking for Dad's gloves, hat, and coat. Then we stood in front of Dad's chair, pleading, making funny faces, and hurry up hand signals, until he finally put down the paper. Very slowly, he pulled on one giant black rubber boot, then other. When Dad was dressed, he reluctantly led the way. We marched behind him, pushing him, as we walked out the sliding glass doors, down the stairs, and down the hill. When we reached the edge of the lake, Dad turned to us and said, Wait! Jackie, David, Candy, Willie, Christy, and I came to an abrupt halt. Then he ran to the house and returned with a shovel and a broomstick. As we lined up along the lake's edge, Dad eased onto the snow-covered ice. Dad, be careful, I shouted. Don't fall in, David screamed. I grabbed Christy's mittened hand and squeezed. What's wrong? she whispered. I'm scared, I replied, as the reality suddenly dawned on me. My dad can't swim. Jackie Jr. twisted the cord attached to a sled. David, Candy, and Willie stepped closer to the edge of the lake. Dad went further out. The ice crackled beneath his feet. He took another step, then cleared the snow from his path with the shovel. From the cleared spot, he was able to tell how thick the ice was. Before he placed one big foot in front of the other, he tapped the ice with his broomstick, testing it for weaknesses or cracks. Tap, tap, tap. Dad took a few steps forward. Tap, tap, tap. Then he took a full, few more steps. But just as he was about to pronounce the ice safe, boom, a terrible noise roared from below the ice. Dad, I shrieked. I was sure the ice was going to open up and swallow him. Jackie Jr. stood ready to shove his sled to Dad. 
David and Candy and Willie inch closer to my brother. We waited for what seemed like forever. It was just an air bubble, Dad called to us as the sound moved down the lake. Dad took a few more steps, tapping as he moved to the deepest part of the lake. He stopped, gave one last tap with a stick, then turned to us and called out, It's safe! Put on your skates! We cheered as loudly as we could, and we skated circles around Dad as he walked back onto solid ground. All I could think was, My dad is the bravest man alive. Now, years have passed, and we understand even more how much courage it took for my father to step out on that ice. In fact, Dad showed the same courage on the ice that day as he did when he broke the color barrier in baseball. No one really knew what would happen, but he felt his way along on an untried path, like a blind man tapping for clues. That was Jackie Robinson, and that was my dad. Big, heavy, out there alone on the lake, testing the ice to be sure it would be safe for us. And he did it, even though he couldn't swim. Today, Major Baseball is reflective of the diverse world we live in. But as history has taught us, the struggle for justice and equality is ongoing.